Okay, hey everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of ThreatWise TV live from RSA 2020. I'm very excited to be here on the show floor talking with some of our experts and we're gonna continue the conversation with some of our friends from Talos. I've brought in Matt Valites. Valetes? Yes, close enough. One of those, <laughs> definitely. But Matt, thanks so much. Tell us about your role within Talos and what Talos does at a high level. Sure. So I'm a manager on Talos' outreach team. Um, we are responsible for being the public face of security here at Cisco. Um, Talos as a whole is about a 400 person large uh, threat research group. Uh, oh, well, that's good because if we're going to be a public face, this is a big face. I mean, <laughs> you look at the size of this booth and our presence here, it's been pretty phenomenal. Agreed? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So we have about 400 people that are focused on finding the latest threats, the emerging threats, uh, turning that into intelligence that we can put back into our products mm -hmm. so that we can protect our customers and really the, the internet uh, writ large. Well, let's talk about that specifically because I, I usually explain Talos as they keep our products ready to defend against the latest threats. That's first and foremost, right? Sure. So how do you do that? How is that accomplished? And what's some of the background pr process there? Sure, so probably most obviously, we get a lot of telemetry from the solutions that we deploy at our customer Absolutely. sites. Absolutely. So uh, the Cisco Security Suite is a pretty full stack suite. And what I mean by that is that we have protections from the endpoint to the network, to the identity, to more networks. So to the cloud. We really can see things, exactly. So we can see things all over, so that gives us a huge haystack of telemetry through which we can search to find needles. Sure. Uh, in addition, it's a pretty organic approach that we take. So if a threat researcher can come up with an idea to find a new telemetry or new ways to detect things, it's fair game to go ahead and build that out. So we've got our product suite, and then we've got a whole bunch of other things that our researchers, our smart researchers, have built to get additional data. Scary smart researchers. I've, I've met a few of them, and sometimes it's like, whoa, OK, cool. <laughs> Don't piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> so a, a question I get a lot of times is, how do I get Talos? A co customers ask that all the time. Right. I know the answer to that. I want to hear sure. your explanation of what you respond to that question. Yeah, so almost every customer that we talk to says, uh, you know, yeah. how do I get Talos? Can I, what feed do I subscribe to or email address? Um, there is no SKU. We are not for sale. If you have Cisco products, it's our intelligence that is going into those products to protect you. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, we do have some ways that you can actually get indicators of compromise. Uh, every week we publish a, a weekly threat roundup, and within that we review the last the things that we've seen over the last week, and we publish that in JSON format to our blog, so you can pull that down, you can put that into MISP or whatever you're using for your threat intelligence platform. And just recently we actually started including uh, mappings from indicators in that list to the attack, uh, MITRE's attack framework. So now if you use attack framework to figure out where you're vulnerable, uh, where you're able to detect things, uh, we include that now in the threat roundup as well. So uh, speaking of a couple of the resources that we use to, to uh, outreach and reach out to people with. Uh, I know to the blog is extremely popular. I reference Correct. that one a lot. Why don't you tell us about the blog and how, how customers can use that? Because I've seen some certainly. demos and I know where we're going. Yeah, with certainly. So uh, again, we're the public face of security, which means that we publish uh, the blog, to our blog at uh, talusintelligence.com. That is all our cutting edge research. Um, those are things that we are finding before anyone else is finding. Uh, it describes the problems. We've got executive summaries, so uh, any skill level can absorb this content. There's IOCs at the end, and we map that to the product protections if that's a threat that you face. So yeah, and I've seen some way. really cool demos of where we just go by and just just copy a huge swath of information, and you've got IP addresses and IOCs and MAC addresses and URLs and domains, yep. and it just gets thrown into Casebook, and then we can start to correlate that uh, across our product line and see, hey, where have you seen this threat in your organization? Yep. So love, love using that example. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the trends. What's been going sure. on in, uh, in 2020 and 2019, having just wrapped that up? Mm -hmm. So uh, what, over the last 12 months, what have you seen that's been prominent? Sure, so um, you know, we're seeing a um, change in victimology. Right, so we're seeing uh, different what groups is the, what targeted. Is victimology? Um, so one example, of what we're seeing is recently we found a phishing campaign that was targeting uh, veterans, so U.S. military oh. veterans. So, so phishing the emails are going being, vertical now. Yeah, so they're trying to, uh, try, you know, they're going to try and uh, attack anyone that they can. But this was uh, a phishing campaign. It had a fake, um, fake job site for veterans. Um, so it was really targeted oh. at that group of individuals. Um, we have also seen um, security researchers like myself who are also being um, focused on. So for instance, um, recently there was this iPhone um, rooting that happened right around Black Hat. It was called Check Rain. And what we saw was that there was, again, malicious folks leveraging this um, topical event that the security community was all concerned about. Yep. And they set up a fake website where if you went there and you downloaded Check Rain, 
you were not downloading Check Rain, you were downloading something malicious. So uh, again, change in victimology, focusing on the people who are doing this type of research. I am never, uh, it never ceases to amaze me the way, how creative they get, and I'm like, Gosh, you know, from a marketing perspective, that's genius. You know, Absolutely. I got this new attack. Hey, wait, let me time it to a security product Absolutely. or a security conference, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's fantastic. Well, I'm glad we've got even smarter guys like you mm -hmm. guys to stay on top of that stuff. Um, any more like cool war stories or examples? I love hearing, you know, getting some of the anecdotes and then sure. Well, relaying I, those. You know, I, I, there's one that I, I've been finding quite interesting lately. It's somewhat of a uh, of a nefarious um, um, use um, of this malware. So it's something called Emotet, which is not new at all, yeah. but this, this strain of malware has just been evolving constantly. And one of the things that we've been seeing do recently is pretty insidious. Um, when you get infected with this malware, what it's doing is it's taking uh, the email credentials, so the username, the password, and yeah. the SMTP server, and it's sending those up to the C2. But along with that, it's also sending entire email threads. So it'll take a thread out of the, uh, out of the victim's mailbox, yeah. send that up with the credentials, and then when another box gets infected, it doesn't have to be the same one. It can be on the other side of the world in a different company. It will use those stolen email credentials as well as that uh, email thread that it stole to try and social engineer the recipient, from, uh, the recipient of that email. Wow. So they're taking emails from one place, shipping it out somewhere else, and using that in their spam uh, to try and convince people to click on links. Like personalized phishing almost. Yeah, and it also ways, makes you huh? wonder if they're stealing email content uh, and they're just using it for social What's engineering. What's in that email? What happens when they actually realize what it is that they have in their possession? And are we going to be looking at things like extortion in the future based so on that? So stop emailing your credit card number and your selfies and... Make some secure passwords and know when they're compromised. Absolutely. Yes. So uh, tell me uh, a little bit, maybe about like some of the future trends or things that you're looking out for or see around the corner that, that people need to be making sure they have on their radar as we wrap up the conference this week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, it's a lot of best practices. So yeah, these... So, so many things go back to the blocking and tackling, right? Very much so. So, you know, we, we are always looking for nation state level attacks. We are always looking for um, targeted attacks uh, that uh, are novel and that are unique. And we're right. certainly going to do that, but I think what we're going to really see is a, is a, a pushback to the basics. So things like uh, managing identity, um, protecting identity, um, monitoring on the endpoints, um, things like actually doing security monitoring proactively rather than waiting for you to get breached. Network segmentation, all these sorts of things, all these protections, I think, are the trends we're going to start seeing from a defensive yeah, standpoint. You said nation states. I mean, we've always talked about that. We've seen some of it, but I don't think we've seen it, that be as high profile of an area of focus and concern as we have over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And probably coming up in uh, in the next election as as well, right? Certainly, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we again we try to focus on global threats uh, that are salient, and elections are coming up. We've already seen examples where um, we've seen malware uh, phishing that's uh, focused on. Um, uh, presidential candidates. Yep. Uh, again, it has nothing really to do with the candidate itself. It's just because that's in the news. That's what people are interested in. You got attackers uh, are going to use whatever they can. You got a fifty percent chance of hitting the right side of the equation, wh whichever exactly. it is. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, thanks so much yeah. for coming up and joining us thanks, on the Jason. show. And I want to have Talos represented more well in the future on the show going forward. So this has been a great first step. I'm glad to have you guys up right here. On. Thanks, So Jason. that's a, a good overview of Talos and some of the things that we've been seeing out there. So thanks so much for tuning into this edition of ThreatWise TV. Catch you next time.